joined by five-time Daytona 200 winner, Mr. Daytona Scott Russell down in pit lane, Greg White covering all the action down there. It is time for the opening round of the MotorcycleSuperstore.com Supersport Championship. By far and away, biggest field that we're going to see here. It is immense. It's like the old days. It really is, Greg. There's a, almost a full field of riders out there, and, and it is a full field, the biggest we've had. And, and it's going to be a barn burner, too, because these guys really go for it. And uh, these 600s, you know, it's easy for these riders to be able to ride these bikes to their limits. So I suspect, yeah, I don't know, Tommy Porta, he laid down a pretty good time out here today. So he, he was talking to me earlier about, can I get away? What should I do if I do? Blah, blah, blah. So we'll see if he can make the break. But I kind of doubt it. it's going to be tough. That draft really works good here at Daytona. It is. It's a little bit breezy, so the draft's going to help with that as well. Our starting grid crawling across the top in the progressive hat. You can take a look for a rider that you're interested in at this point. Now, you'll notice there's a gap in the seventh spot on row two. Pat Mooney uh, was featured to start there, and he will not make the start. So there's a little bit of breathing room. And also, in the uh, fourth row, number uh, 13, Charlie Weaver, is going to be starting at the back. He ended up not running the sighting lap, so you see the gap there uh, for him and uh, he's going to have to start at the back and that's going to be tough duty coming through an awfully big field. Yeah, it is. You know what excite is I'm excited about right now is the Matthew Sadowski, David Sadowski brothers right there. Their father David Sadowski won this Daytona 200 back in 1989 I want to think or 1990 and so it's good to see these two guys get a good ride with the Yamaha and really be able to showcase their talent. So they're starting on the inside of row two, right beside each other. So watch number 100 and number 101. I suspect some good stuff from those guys. And this big field on its way out for their warm-up lap. They'll come around and resume the grid position and head down. Now keep in mind that you've got uh, here, you start in the pit lane and then you go into turn one. So it's a little bit different here in how that's going to work. Jason Pridmore joining us here on Speed 2. And Jason, understand you've got a last-minute report. I do, Greg. Yeah, yesterday afternoon, Miles Thornton was running up in the top five, top six placings when he had a big accident exiting turn one through the first little kink. Him and his dad just got his bike back together literally minutes before the start of this race, and he's going to be starting from the last row. So one of those weekends, I know Scott's had him here before, and uh, they're frustrating, but he's on the grid, and he's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, it's going to be tough for him, you know, with such a short race, only a 10-lap race here today to come from the back through a to a pack of riders like that, Miles really got his work cut out for him, and he's just had tough luck, that kid. And, but hopefully he'll be able to salvage something decent out of it for the rest of the season. And as we're watching the rest of this warm-up lap, we a little bit earlier, Greg White was able to check in with our pole sitter, Tommy Puerta. For Tommy Puerta, his fourth pole position in the class, and sitting here at Daytona, the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, Tommy. Your time was good enough to put you on pole, but there's a couple other riders that are really close in terms of lap times. What are you expecting in this race? I don't know. I think that the track is way better than what we qualified on yesterday. So I, I think everybody's going to go faster than qualifying, and we'll see how everything works, and hopefully we can get a gap and don't have to fight with them for the lead on the last lap. We'll see how it works. When he talked there about going faster than in qualifying, some of that due to just the simple fact that it's warmer. That's right. And we saw some of that in the Harley race before this. So, I mean, we were saw guys going faster than the qualifying time. So um, that's something that's going to happen. He's right. And I doubt that he's going to be all alone out there when the last <laughs> lap comes around. So um, for his sake, hopefully so. But we'll, we'll see. I, I think it's going to be a, a dog fight. Um, and, you know, a lot of these riders who didn't qualify as well and are a little bit off in time, all you have to do sometimes is get that toe and have somebody kind of show you the way or how it's done, and you're able to tag along and go with them, and that, that creates great racing here at Daytona. This warm-up lap key, obviously, especially if you made any changes to the bike, you need to just get a feel for did they take or not. I saw one of the riders as he came back down through pit lane to line up, big thumbs up over to his pit box. So uh, I wasn't sure who it was, but whoever it was, he liked what they did. Yeah, they're always kind of make, trying to make these bikes better. Last minute adjustments, you take that uh, hard, hard warm up lap just to see. And uh, whoever that rider was, obviously he's done the right thing. We'll see. And your pole sitter, Tommy Puerta, third in the East Points. The top two in East Points have moved up to Daytona Sport Bike. And he's from Medellin, Colombia on the Road Race Factory Racing Attic by Bosi. Yamaha YZFR6, we are getting ready to go. Again, a 10-lap race for the Motorcycle Super Sport, Super Store Super Sport Championship. First of a doubleheader event here this weekend. Another round coming up tomorrow. Great to have you here on Speed 2. We'll bring you that race tomorrow on Speed 2. Oh, and a problem. 
just that's Miles uh, Thornton. Yeah. Miles Thornton, they just can't get it together. That's that's what Jason was talking about, just getting yeah. that bike together, and uh, unfortunately, it's got issues. Uh, you could just see the frustration. Had that bike, they worked so hard to get it fixed, and then they have that happen. He's just absolutely crushed. All right, we are ready to go. Ten laps at Daytona International Speedway. Good launch, and Puerta nailed that start and leaps into the lead. Oh, somebody out way wide. A lot of riders out yeah. way wide. And that's, that's what you talk about, Greg. They don't get to practice that turn one until the race. So you see a lot of guys missing that. Missing that turn. It's really tight. Well, what a great speed shot. Gives you an idea of just how immense this field is as they go funneling through. And Puerta quickly opening up the margin just a little bit. He just seemed to have, you know, there were some riders close, but he did seem to have the measure in qualifying, and he's putting it to good use right now. No doubt, as he leads down into that West End horseshoe right now, he's got that tight line. You want to hold it real tight on the curb out there, let it drift out a little bit in the middle, and and, and tighten that thing on the exit and get the bike up on the middle of the tire. Stefano Mace has jumped up into second place. So he made a good start right there up, uh, from the fourth spot. Looked like Hayden Gillum slotting into the third spot right where he qualified. First time up onto the banking for these guys here at Daytona in anger during a race. Just watching, listening, that sound is beautiful, and now we'll see just what's going to develop, how intense that toe is going to be. Wow, it's such a good margin Puerta had. He was able to lead him right down into the bus stop. These riders are going to be tentative as they flick it to the right right here. We've had a lot of people crash right here in the chicane. So you want to get through there the first lap. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of guys jockeying for position as you come in there. Everybody seems to so far be through there clean. I think Cody Wyman got a great start up from 10th on the grid. I think he might be in that top four right now. We'll confirm it, but it looked like he really put together a strong lap. And as we're coming down to complete this first lap, let's check in again with Jason. Well, Miles Thornton had a big problem with his throttle. It was sticking. It looked like they made a small adjustment. He got back out there, so we'll just have to keep an eye and see if he's able to get through the race, guys. Well, it's great to see as uh, upset as he was that they were able to get that bike going, and at least he's out competing. And he, indeed, the number three of Cody Wyman in that Harv's Harley Davidson Suzuki GSX R600 up into third. And as I said, he had started back in the 10th spot. That was a great opening lap, but also a huge start. No doubt. The the Wyman family is definitely fast, and they've had some good runs here already today in the Harley class, so can Cody bring it on in? And right now, Stefano Mace is taking over the lead up front, but Tommy Porter, as they went into one, but Tommy Porter found his way back around him somewhere, and now Tommy stretched out about a five by think gap as they run down to turn six, hard breaking that in this corner. You want to get the bike turned and get it a good drive up on the banking. It means a lot on the other end as you get to the chicane as far as top speed, so the drive out of here is critical. Gillum in that four spot and then uh, they had Tigert in fifth as he came by but I think uh, Ferreira may have been able to move up another guy having a great start moving up from uh, the ninth, eighth spot Sebastio Ferreira looking very strong as well. You can see Matt Sadowski dive down on the 100 down there he takes that inside line down the back straight away going to be hard breaking back up to the front group right here as you can see the Sadowski boys in the background. And this second pack as they sweep through. Is that the one on one of David Sadowski That's leading right. that group? He got into a rather rider off the start. I watched him, and now he's made his way back up onto the tail end of his brother. Let's see if they can get together and work together and make their way to the front of the field. He swings around the outside of the 7-7 of Miller. Both riders trying to make that stick. Yeah, that triple seven, Mark Miller started in the 12th spot. And he is coming through very strongly at this point as well. But then he just gets freight trained right around the outside. That white stripe you see, folks, is some oil dry. They did have in the qualifying session right before the Vance and Heinz Harley race, it, uh, a bike lose a motor. And they've done a great job on that because now they're starting to run through it and not showing any adverse effects. Back up front, it continues to be Porta leading over Stefano Mesa. Oh, and Tigert, boy, he came back up. He dropped back outside of the top five, and now he is not only in third, he is challenging for second right on yeah. the back of uh, the 37 of Mesa. What a great ride by yeah. him. He's kind of like an unknown in this class, to be honest with you. I don't remember seeing him last year much, and here he is. 
right here around the podium position right now as they why they run turning into turn six right here you're going to hit that curve let the bike drift out around those barrels they push those barrels out there to kind of to kind of open up the entrance where you're not going straight at the wall so if you, if you didn't have those barrels those riders are going to be trying to run a low line which creates a, a real straight straight down run at that wall so they try to make it more parallel as they go up on the banking yeah and Tigert sitting there again looking at that second spot which was where he qualified so he was opening some eyes immediately and the CM Motorsports baby Appleseed Yamaha and uh, not quite able to sneak through. Oh from the front down he goes. Well that we've seen that's been the spot it here has this been, weekend. and you get a little bit of aggression going down in that chicane and it'll bite you. We've seen it time and time again all weekend. So uh, what well, was looking at, like a great race for him now is over real quick. Now is that a case he made that pass watch him right here cuts in see what happens Scott. Yeah he's just got some good speed as he tips it in right there and maybe he had just a little bit too much speed and a little bit too much break as he tipped it to the right. And uh, like you said it's been dodgy conditions out there all week so uh, you still kind of got to hold a little bit back through there and he just kind of let it all hang out and it got away from him. And he just made that move from third to first so he had some serious draft aided momentum is yep. that sweep in was it maybe just a little bit more than yep. he carried in before exactly what happened. But right now that was good for Hayden Gillum who moves into the third spot the 69 who lost his ride with the road race factory team last year where they were able to put something together and Hayden had some great runs last year won some races and here he is with a real shot to win here at Daytona again today. Yeah second in West Points last year and uh, qualified third in his team 95 RM racing Yamaha. So doing a very solid job uh, right from the get go as they unloaded off the trailer here. And when Taggart went by for the lead you know smart moves Stefano Mesa just tucked with him and went right by Puerta and picked up the lead after Taggart's fall. These are the guys they might need to start thinking about. They don't know they're coming but it's the Sadowski brothers. We've seen a long time since we've seen a Sadowski come to the front of the pack here at Daytona. Matt Sadowski's really making a run. He's kind of dropped his brother David Sadowski off a little bit off the back. But Matt can see him. He can smell it from there right now. Let's see what he can do. Mesa's down the inside now. It's going to be a breaking duel between these two guys. Yeah, it looked like Puerto popped to the outside and then just hit that wall of air, but he had enough momentum. He was able to go through Mesa second, Gillum third, and that little gap, as you pointed out, to Mr. Sadowski. That's right. And all those riders behind the leaders right here saw Taggart fall down right there, so they were kind of tiptoeing through there that, lap, that next lap just to make sure they get through that chicane okay. And now continue the race right now. The top three have about a 20 bike lead over this man right here Matthew Sadowski nice run quickest lap last time was a uh, 153 4 by Gillum but Sadowski was right there and now he's look at this move nicely done by Gillum around the outside of both of them and he picks up the lead Puerta tried to go around Mesa just didn't quite have enough on it now tries to cut down underneath get the best line through the chicane and heading down into the International Horseshoe. Now Sadowski holds fast this lap 53-2 right there. He's made some big ground right there. Porter stuffs it up the inside of Mason. Look who's right there, the 100. He's on him now as they make their run down the infield straight through this fast kink right here. This is hairball right here. Really intense moments right here when you're on the motorcycle. You want to get through there as fast as you can. You're rolling when you go through there. Sadowski swinging it way out, trying to get the best drive he can here. He looks, he looks tidy right there. He was able to drift it out, hold a tight line. Now, what will he do? Will he try to make his way to the front or will he sit back and just watch and learn? This is a tough class to do that because there's always somebody coming from behind and it possibly could be his brother who's in the fifth spot. So he can't lay off too much. They've got a good gap between that next group. So it might be smart for him to just kind of sit and watch for a minute. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, Dave Sadowski Jr. got around Ferreira and picked up that fifth spot and yeah. just that quick. <laughs> well he just answered my question. Yeah. He's not. I don't think he's ever led a race here so he's going to get out there and he wants to lead this thing as they come by. Down into the chicane. Keeping it cut. Keep it tidy right there. Big wheelie out of there by Porta. When you flick the bike from the right to the left the track rises a little bit and that's when you see these bikes accelerate and it, and it lifts the front wheel. Sadowski on the high side. Looked high then low way down low is Mesa Mesa now coming up getting that draft tucked right in behind Puerta swings to the inside 
And well, he's got the inside, but look at Sadowski. That outside line tends to give you a little bit better entry speed. But that was a savvy move by Puerta. He just sort of drifted up a little bit, wasn't it? Yep, that's right. He's been around here a few times. He's been through this before. He knows how it's going, how it's going to play out, and he knows how you got to kind of get aggressive here. And he and wants look to take that lead again. <laughs> Boy, he wants to lead, doesn't he? He does. He, he feels like from the pole position, this is his race to lose. So he's going to try to control it, control the pace as much as he can and show everybody, I can outride these guys in the infield. And that's exactly what he's doing. These three other guys that's got something to say about it right now. And just that quick, we are past halfway, folks. We're working lap six of ten. And closing in. That's David Sadowski yeah. right there with Ferreira behind him. Oh, big, big slide out of there. He's getting aggressive. He can see the leaders, and he wants to get up there with them. Does that open the door for Ferreira? No, he's able to close that door as they make their way up on that west bank again. I tell you, that's right. You don't want your brother to beat you, man, in this race. So it's kind of a little rivalry between those two for sure when they're sitting around the dinner table bragging about who did what at Daytona. You want to be able to on top of that deal. Now we look at the gap between our fourth place rider Gillum and 101 Sadowski Jr. How far back will those guys feel that draft from this league group? Well, you got to get quite a bit closer before you're going to start feeling it. But what happens, these four bikes pan out. You know, you can feel it from quite a ways back. And now Matt leads it out of the chicane for the first time leading the race here at Daytona. What a run he's made to get to that point. Now, let's see what kind of power that Arai sponsored uh, top shelf motorcycle bike has. He's on a Yamaha. Nice helmet. I kind of like that helmet. Stands out of pretty good out there. But here he comes. He's got company down the inside. That's Porta. Boy, Puerta is just strong everywhere. And he gives it up, but he quickly is able to get it back. And does just that. Now we'll see whether Matt has an answer. And then they run into a little bit of lap traffic. And able to get through there clean. No, that wasn't lap traffic. Sorry, that was the 37 to 7 of Mesa. Of Mesa. He was way down to the inside trying to make that move. Caught me out completely. And Puerto now is gapping him just a little bit. And here comes Mesa. And does take away second spot. Well, Mesa sees that little bit of a gap that he opened up right there. And he said, I got to get by Sadowski, see if I can catch that back up. And that's kind of exactly what he's doing right now. He'll put the brakes on a little bit lighter into this corner right now and able to roll up on him. Stefano's kind of changed his riding style a little bit. There's a good look at Sadowski and Ferreira. Sada uh, Mesa used to be a guy who really backed the motorcycle into the corners last year, completely sideways every way you look at him. Now, Sadowski out of the seat again, but now you see Mesa. He's tidied up his riding style. He's keeping the bike more in line. And that was a mistake right there by Matt Sadowski. Yeah. Nick Austin. He's got it all to do over again, and he's running out of time now with four to go, three and a half. Yeah, that's basically going to bring him right back to his brother and Ferreira. It's just that close. It, uh, it's unfortunate that was a bit of a bobble. And now it looks as though it's starting to be a bit of a break up front for Puerta and Mesa. Gillum trying hard not to let them go. That's right. Matt started to make time to rebound from the mistake he made. His brother's got a bit of a gap on Ferrari. He's going to pull a nice draft off of Ferrari right here and see if he can swing around back up front of the leaders. And they're not done with each other either. Mesa's going to lead it. They've gone back and forth the whole race. Yeah, Puerta dropped low. Mesa said that's fine. Went to the outside. But now you can see Puerta tucked right back in behind. Got the draft as they got a little bit further on. But boy, he is way out high. But that gives you a great radius down into the Whoa! Corner, a little bobble. Mesa's thought about it. Is he going to get it done, Scott? And this is exactly what the riders behind him want to see. These guys battling it back and forth, and that may allow them to pull back that little bit of a lead that these guys have got on them right now. Hayden Gillum running third right now. Everybody by in the top five, top six running 153. He's all, all across the line that time. So it can get tight. These two guys up front make a little bit of a mistake. These other three guys are going to be right on them. This is the warmest it's been. We've had sun on this track all day now. Late in the race, does it get a little slick relative to the tires? I don't think that's a problem. Okay. I think that's just the riding style of these guys. It's, it's typically this type of a slick track anyway in the infield. Doesn't offer too much grip. So you're going to see these bikes back in and moving around a lot just because they're riding that hard. And Gillum not that far back, and he's got David and Matt Sadowski right there as well. And right behind them is Ferreira. So... If they can join this, we've got three, well, call it two and a half laps to go. 
If these guys catch them, it's going to be interesting. I believe they're going to. Yeah. But the way these two keep going side by side down the straightaway, that allows these guys that are running by a uh, single file behind them to kind of work together. Now down behind him, there's Porter. He's going for the lead. Sadowski's looking down the inside. There's two Sadowski's inside, outside of Ferreira. He holds them off this time as they go into the chicane. David all over the curb on the way in and what, to the right as well, but got through there clean. And now he's going to feel he's this. going to feel that draft. That's now. Right now they're getting close, but Ferreira's bike looks slow. So when he's out front, doesn't look like he's doing any help to pull. And now Matt drops down low. Look at that Yamaha run. He's able to wheel, reel him back in. And now we got a five horse race. Well, this is getting good, and we're going to have two to go when we come by start finish. And it is well and truly starting to heat up. And again, Puerta likes that outside line in and makes it work. Mesa slots into second, then the Sadowskis, then Gillum, who just that quick finds himself fifth. This is going to get good, Greg. <laughs> this is going to get real good. This class is always good to watch and always fun to call. And Porta, he made him a little mistake in one last time. He cleaned that up, got through there nice, and he holds the lead over Mesa down the infield straight. But Matt Sadowski, he's the guy they got to watch because he fell back, was able to reel those riders back in. Matt made that little mistake, but he has rebounded beautifully right back up into third, right on the back of Mesa. And as you said, a six bike train right now. And uh, yeah. some hand gesturing there. Wondering Maybe, what that was all have, about. I don't know. Not sure what happened there, but he's got company. Mesa does behind him. He don't know. Ooh. David Sadowski out of the saddle again. He's trying to get the power to the ground on that Yamaha. You know, and they just. That's a that's a tricky corner right there. So you kind of got to baby the throttle. You kind of got to work with. He got a little aggressive with it, and it cost him. But sit out. Matt sit out. He's got a two bike run as they run down the back straight. Probably should not dive down to the inside here because as dodgy as the chicane's been, you don't yep. want to you don't want to put yourself at risk. Yeah. David makes that move again down the inside. Wow. Yeah, he had right that little there. bobble, but he really was able to stream back up. And I think you're right, Matt. Yeah, just backed off a little bit. Now, is there some strategy at play here? You know, don't want to be leading starting this last lap. You want to have, you know, so you, you check up a little bit? I think so, but I think the Sadowski boys, I don't think they've led a race, a, a, a lap here yet at Daytona. So they're going to want to get up there and lead it. <laughs> and, you know, it's a dog fight, man. Oh, look it's at it's this. hard to lay back when you're in a race like this. It really is. Had them four bikes abreast for just a minute, and that has allowed Ferreira and Gillum to just join this train. They're fanning out, heading down into turn one. And look at that inside move. Puerta trying to make it work. Couldn't quite get it done on Mesa. And this is the white flag lap. This is going to be the last time. Everybody's got to do everything right. Put themselves in the right spot. Look at Matt Sadowski. Wow. I mean, David down the inside. And then Matt pushes Puerta right out of the way as well. They're ganging up on these. They're teaming up on these guys. This is great stuff. Got your brother as a blocking back. Might as well follow him when he like punches that I'm hole. Seeing, Absolutely. Man. I love it. So Mesa is under full attack, as you would expect here. The Sadowski's coming after it, and now Puerta comes back down the inside, picks up that third spot, and we've got a lap bike that they are coming up on this time. Yeah, it looks like it's going to work out just perfect. Well, no, it isn't. Well, hopefully the blue flag, he saw that. He looks like he had a problem, pulled right out of the way. Didn't impede any of these guys. So here we go. Through the West Bank one more time, Greg. Who do you think? Oh, I, who knows? <laughs> that's the that's the beauty of it. I know it. Is it all comes down to which way you choose or which way the guy goes? Um, yeah, you got at least a 40% chance it's a Sadowski. I guess you're uh, going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's the look down to the inside, and okay. swinging way up high is is uh, Dave Sadowski on the 101. Look, he tried to kind of open the door and let everybody go. Nobody bit. <laughs> Matt, Matt's kind of laid back. He's sitting in a great spot right there. I don't think Ferrer's got the bike to draft these guys. I could be wrong. Maybe he's been sandbagging. But I think Matt Sadowski's in a good spot. But this stuff's stretching out quick. Yep. There he Well, he's going to benefit from those two guys side by oh, side. Oh, this is going to be good. Mesa on point. All right, here we go. We are absolutely two, three, four abreast down to the inside. The Sadowskis are coming. I don't think they've got enough. Wow. wow. 
now as close as they could go but not quite enough and Stefano Mesa on the motosport.com Tucker Rocky bike that is uh, one of those Yamahas that is just so incredibly effective here has pulled it off and look at the Sadowski's going nice. Right, they are so happy those kids worked so hard to be here and Mesa what a great ride by him and Tommy Porta any of those guys could have yeah. won that race and that's that's what we like to see a real battle coming to the line and kept it clean and uh, just man put himself in the right spot that 37 did. Yeah, that, that I think was the key thing. They got into these packs and, you know, essentially these are the least experienced of, of the of the guys that are out there. Super clean race, had the one off. That's it. Yeah, you ain't kidding, man. What a, what a race. What a race. And everybody running their hearts out to be sure. Hayden Gillum right there enjoying the moment, doing a little celebrating. The triple seven as well. He had a nice run too, Miller did. Hadn't qualified all that well. Came from 12th yep. up into the seventh spot. So some guys put on some really great rides. It's just a matter of where you're catching the draft here. And sometimes it's just not quite enough. This guy read it beautifully. Oh, late in the going, the number 31 has had a drop. That's uh, Chris Knopf, I think. And uh, that's the chicane again. Yeah. That has been the, the Achilles heel so far. Let's see what happened here, Scott. Oh, oh yeah, he just almost ran in the back of the other rider and had to grab the front brake and uh, that's not a way you want to end it here on the last lap. But he's okay and I guess that's something to be said for that but he's, he's going to be kicking himself for that. Yeah and that was just a case I mean, that corner you know you're transitioning and when you're in that double right part I mean you're, that's full load on there yeah. any kind of, of a change it's going to be sketchy. He just it? got a yeah. little close to the guy in front whether he checked up on him or not it's hard to say but he was going to hit him and instead of taking them both out took himself down. Let's take a look at the unofficial results here in Super Sport race number one on the season Stefano Mesa great. Great ride to the win. The Sadowskis completing the podium. That's fantastic. Hayden Gillum right there in fourth. Thomas Buerta in fifth. The 73 of Sebastio Ferreira in the sixth spot. Then a little bit of a gap back to Mark Miller. Cody Wyman having a great run. Amanda Ferrer up in the ninth. And Travis OG completes the top ten on that number four. Houston Superbikes and K-Tech machine. Nicely driven there. That's the Suzuki GSX R600. But uh, today pretty much Yamaha's. Yeah. Completing that field. They just seem to work awfully well here, don't they? They really do. And they've, they've, they've stacked the field pretty much, too, in this class. There's a whole bunch of Yamahas in it. And, uh, you know, they, this kid here, he, he's a pretty spectacular rider. We knew he had a great talent watching him last year. And he's really cleaned up his riding, and it really paid off here, you know, keeping the bike in line, keeping it rolling, keeping that roll speed in the middle of the corner. And, uh, He's got a bright future ahead of him for sure. Out of Boca Raton, Florida is what he calls home right now. So a uh, Floridian always like to win in the home state. And it's Daytona. So I mean if you can win here you know it's a great way to start the season with a win. But when you come out of Daytona with a win anytime it's pretty nice. Well this is a special place isn't it. You know as a racer everybody wants to win at Daytona. They all want to be able to roll into that winter circle and stand on the top of that box. And there's only that one spot and the number 37 is going to take that one today. And the Sadowski clan doing a superb job as well to sweep the remaining spots on the podium. And uh, they worked well. They they were effective at just by themselves, but they worked well together too. They did, and it was so close when they came to the line. I didn't think uh, Matt was able to get third. It was a it was so close between him and Gillum and Porta that it was too close to call, but the uh, the beacon didn't lie and he ends up <laughs> third and, and they gotta be thrilled. Absolutely, but the guy who gets to talk to our Greg White in just a minute here in Victory Circle is your winner as always Stefano Mesa just a just a superb ride he put in and uh, looks that's a great look in Victory Circle it's uh, it's a very special place to be able to get there and we're ready Greg. Congratulations what a win for you that race was so close all the way down to the wire tell me about that last lap. I mean the whole five of us were right ready. it was for anybody my motorsports triple crown bike was great it ran great. Uh, it was really, really fast and really comfortable to ride, so that's good that we made it here and much more to come. What were you thinking coming out of the final chicane? Everybody was going kind of slow because they told us all about the draft, so I just said maybe if I sit second, I can grab the draft of the first one and just draft them all the way to the to finish line. And you did it. Congratulations. Thank you.
you know, one of the great things about this class, uh, as well as uh, super bikes, uh, you know, which we'll be seeing later, certainly, and uh, it, you get to see them again this weekend. That's yeah. the wonderful part about it. It they is. To... It, for a rider, it's great, too, because you tell a shot at winning two times, and if you have a bad race, you get to come back and try to redeem yourself from that second run. So um, it makes it a, a long championship, you know, when you got mm -hmm. two runs like that and a lot of points available. You know, you see Dave Sadowski, super happy, and and they're all part of this Triple Crown effort. Right. Which they got a lot of riders out there, and it's, they've, they've put a great program together for a lot of these riders, and, and uh, did good. They did great, and they get to do it again tomorrow, and you'll be able to watch it right here on Speed 2. So round one of the Motorcycle Superstore Super Sport Championship is underway. Round two will be coming up tomorrow right here on Speed 2. The Maybe the best news of all, aside from some more great racing tomorrow, is it's supposed to be even nicer, a little warmer, nice and sunny. It is going to be spectacular. So thanks for joining us here on Speed 2 for Scott Russell, for Jason Pridmore, and of course for Greg White. I'm Greg Creamer. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again right here on Speed 2.